Philo, what's poppin'? Dang, we are on Twitch. We are live, but by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. You get me. Don't forget twitch.com if you want to watch a live or you miss a live and you want to catch up on lives. Username is at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget we do got merch. And we also, you feel me? We also uh, got Patreon. My phone just died. Dang, I pull up the chat on a different phone, huh? That's why I got two phones, though, okay? Anywho, YouTube, this is my warning. Let's get into it. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the, of the Copyright, copyright Act, Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. This is my dog. I don't even know why I did the copyright uh, disclaimer. Skyboy, salute. I'm going to bring it up every video. A long time ago, I, I, and still to this day, I, I hold this close to me. Whoever starts making documentaries, it's the easiest way to get on, the, on YouTube, a documentary. I don't care what that documentary is about. You're going to be good. <laughs> You're going to be up. He, and now, he's been going a minute okay. now. But he got 17,000. It doesn't matter. At 1,000 subs, you start getting paid. So, you know what I'm saying? So, Tottenham's Deadliest Gang, OFB. This is by Skyboy. It's a 34-minute video. I think this is his longest video. So, you know what I'm saying? I know watch time went crazy. Even at 58,000 views? Yeah, definitely. Why watch time went crazy? That's the trick, man. Do longer content. That way you can bunch more commercials in. No, not all the commercials get seen just because you put them on there. See, I'm, I'm driving gems right now. Y'all don't even know that. <laughs> we are in Tottenham, which is a town in oh, North Tottenham. London, okay. within the London borough of Harringay. Tottenham was renowned for its multicultural, ethnically diverse population, following an influx of an Afro-Caribbean population during the Whitbrush era in the mid 20th century. It became one of the most ethnically diverse areas in Britain. It has more recently I become home to an increased population from Africa, Asia, South America, and Eastern Europe. So today I'll be portraying the history of a famous London estate. I only hear bad things. It known as Broadwater Farm. The historical events that have happened there, as well as key events involving those from there that has shaped London as we know it. I'll be discussing every generation that has sprouted from that estate. In the late 1970s, Winston Silcott, along with a group of individuals, formed the Broadwater Farm Posse in the Broadwater Farm estate. Now on the 5th of October 1985 at 1 p.m., a young black man known as Floyd Jarrett, who lived about a mile away from the farm, was falsely arrested by police, having been stopped in a vehicle that was suspicious. He was taken to a nearby Tottenham police station and charged with theft and assault. Is he was later acquitted of both charges. Five and a half hours later, Detective Constable Randall and three other officers decided to search his mother's home. Now, 49-year-old Symphony Jarrett immediately collapsed and died from a heart attack during disputed circumstances. Now, the inquest into Miss Jarrett's death told us that her daughter, Patricia, claimed to have seen Detective Constable Randall push her mother whilst conducting a search inside their home, causing her to fall. Randall denied the allegation. Jarrett's death sparked outrage from some members of the I didn't know this either. The black community against the conduct of the Metropolitan Police. There was widespread belief that the police were institutionally racist. Following Jerry Gross shooting by police a week earlier, in particular, the local council leader, Bernie Grant, later condemned the search and urged the local police chief to resign immediately as their behavior had been out of control. Now the death caused protests and demonstrations outside Tottenham Police Station by a small crowd of people Violence between police and the youths escalated during the day. Riot police tried to clear the streets using baton charges. The youths in the conflict used bricks and petrol bombs, resulting in many injuries as well as extensive damage to property and vehicles. This escalated 
into a full-blown riot and a Broadwater Farm posse were present. At 9.30 p.m., police and the London Fire Brigade responded to reports of a fire on the elevated level of Tangemere House. The London Fire Brigade came under attack as did the police. The rioting was too intense for police untrained in riot control and they and the firefighters withdrew. Now there was a policeman called Keith Blakelock who when retreating tripped. He was surrounded by a mob with machetes, knives and other weapons who killed him in an attempt to decapitate him. PC Richard Coombs suffered a serious facial injury from one of the attackers when he made efforts to rescue his colleague. The riot it tailed off during the night, Dang. the rain fell and the news of the death spread. After the murder of one of their own, police maintained- I didn't know about this at all. The only thing I be knowing about Broadwater is OFB and um, uh, Mark Dugan. Dugan, Dugan. Made a substantial presence on the Broadwater Farm estate for several months, arresting and questioning right, 400 Pete. people. The disturbances led to changes in police tactics and equipment and efforts to re-engage with the community. Bernie Grant, then leader of Labour, who controlled Haringey Council, later elected as a Labour MP for Tottenham, was widely condemned for reportedly saying the police got a bloody good hiding. Six people, three juveniles and three adults were charged with the murder of PC Blakelock. One of those adults was none other than Winston Silcott. The other two were Engin Ragib and Mark Braithwaite. Amongst those kids allegedly involved was Mark Lambie, someone who would become very important to the history of the estate later. Lambie laughed as the case against him and the two other juveniles collapsed. Now in March 1987, the three adults charged were convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. The police claimed more than 30 eyewitness descriptions of Silcott that night. However, not one matched the red and white outfit he was wearing. Of the thousand photographs taken during the riot, he appeared in none of them. Despite there being 42 wounds to PC Blakelock, there was no forensic evidence linking Silcott to the killing. The only evidence against Silcott was that officers claimed that Silcott had implicated himself during questioning. The evidence was destroyed by expert evidence which showed the police notes had been altered and that some of Silcott's responses were manufactured oh, by interviewing officers. Wow. They had their eyes on that man and wanted him to go down, period. On the 25th of November 1991, all three defenders were cleared by the Court of Appeal oh, okay. when an electrostatic the detection apparatus test demonstrated police notes of interrogation had been tampered with. Braithwaite and Raghib were released after four years in prison. Silcott remained in prison for the separate murder of another man, Tony Smith, which occurred in December 1984 in the Tottenham area. And for but let's be real, man. After four years being locked up, it was only four years. It could have been longer. Like, they could have been gone. Like, technology could have took off on them. But, like, after four years of being locked up, wrongly accused, like, like, at this point, like, you've lost a lot. Like, it's only four years you can still get your life back. But that f four years is a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. The world pass you by. If you had a girl... Just gone. You know what I'm saying? If you had a baby and you had just had a baby, four years of their life, the four years that you used to connect with them, gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's rough. That's rough. For which he was convicted in February prison for the separate murder of another man, Tony Smith, which occurred in December 1984 in the Tottenham area, and for which he was convicted in February 1986. He was released on license in October 2003 after serving 18 years in prison. Silcott received compensation of £17,000 for his wrongful conviction. Two of the investigators I guess, I guess. The police officers were prosecuted for fabricating evidence but were acquitted in 1994. Silco received a further £50,000 in compensation from the Metropolitan Police in an out of court settlement. Which oh, bro got cashed out a little bit. That's still pretty, like, that's not, that don't equate to all the time I lost in my life. Like, per year, what's that, 67000 divided by however long he was locked up? Mm -mm. Ending in a civil action against 
to, from the Metropolitan Police in an out-of-court settlement which ended in a civil action against the force for malicious prosecution. Now during the first few years of Silcott's arrest, Mark Lambie built up a fearsome reputation in the streets. He became known for shootings, robberies, kidnappings, torture and drug trafficking. He stayed fresh by flaunting gold jewellery, designer clothes and expensive cars. He went on to lead and form a gang known as the Tottenham Mandem, aka TMD, after older Broadwater posse generation had moved away from the gritty end of the business. The youngest generation of Tottenham Mandem began to establish their fearsome and violent reputation from 1996 to 97. The TMD's fear of controlling North London at that point was tremendous. They had influence over new developing gangs that also arose in the late 90s, top, boy. 90s such as the Edmonton Firm, Wood uh -huh. Green Firm, Hornsey, parts of N19 and bits of N16. See, back in the day, people from Tottenham, Edmonton and Wood Green were all united. At the top was Mark Lambie, known also as the Prince of Darkness or as Phantom. He was the boss of the street team that was TMD. Above him remained the old timers who maintained drug and firearm connections amongst organized criminal element with links to the Caribbean. Ah, my boy Rose Kemp. Below Lambie, there was lieutenants who controlled geographical areas. These included men such as Anthony Bourne, known as Blue from Edmonton, who headed the famous Edmonton firm. Warren Leader was based in Wood Green, and then there was a host of infamous Tottenham criminals. In 1997, the youngsters of TMD, aged predominantly in their mid to late teens, came into conflict with another gang predominantly from London Fields in Hackney. It was one of London's bloodiest and most intense gang rivalries. Now on the 5th of January 1997, Guy Dance Dakers was a 16 year old boy from Hackney who was enjoying himself at Chimes nightclub when he was shot in the head and collapsed in a pool of blood on the dance floor. The gun, a 9mm Astra pistol, was later found in the toilets at the venue. Other weapons found that included two knives and a knuckle duster. The attack was said to have been random. Another person who was also shot during the attack was taken to hospital but survived and was discharged soon after. Now TMD Lieutenant Anthony Bourne and Fabian Fatinikun were charged for the murder but were later cleared. Now according to the book Guns and Gangs by Graham McLagan, the police operation Trident unit put the Bro really did his research. He didn't read a book about this? Start of the war down to the killing of Guy Dance Dakers. However, Trident unit put the start of the war down to the killing of Guy Dance Dakers. However, the real ignition is believed by many to have been brought on earlier. See, in 1995, a couple of youths from Tottenham had been friendly with youths from London Fields. They went out together robbing people, including young dealers in other parts of North London. The Tottenham youth, however, started to come back to Hackney and re-rob the Hackney boys, which caused very serious grievances. One of the TMD youths stabbed the Hackney boy from Pembury in the leg during one of the re-robberies, an act which led to a series of violence between the two areas. Now on the 1st of February 1997, Tottenham Mandem youngsters C1, real name Clinton Ponton, and Popcorn, real name Kinsley. Hey, Skyboy, listen, your editing is getting up there with mine. You are slowly but surely becoming one of the best editors on the platform. This is and this is very in, informative. Like I didn't know nothing about the first eight minutes of this. Lily Sara were outside with other youngsters when they were chased by London field members. Unfortunately, Popcorn was cornered into a block of flats on the Carlton Lodge estate, a small estate around Carlton Road, just north of Frisbee Park. He was beaten up and then shot in the leg in the presence of at least six members of the Hackney Boys. He was taken to Whitterton Hospital where he was pronounced dead at 4 a.m. The 16-year-old Pop mm, yeah, from the leg must have hit that, vet, that vein. Popcorn was well known and well connected in the Tottenham area. Rumours were that Popcorn was targeted because he stabbed one of the youths who was later involved in a revenge attack against him during an argument over stolen money. Now there's rumours many believe about a very important individual in the story known as C1. Till this day you'll find it under most YouTube videos related to him where they'll call him a snitch. They claim in this case he helped convict the six That's suspects C1? Hackney. The six people were convicted of only conspiracy to commit grievously bodily harm with intent, but because it was not possible to determine who fired the shot, no one was charged with his murder. Other than the person who fired the shot, it was not possible to determine that any of them knew that a gun was to be used in an assault. 
Now after a few years, two of the people sentenced were now free and back on the streets. They were men of real name Menelik Robinson and Corey Wright. Now on the 25th of June 2000, Mena had been driving in his red BMW convertible car along Upper Clapton Road when two motorbikes came up behind him. They each had two men on them who were described as black. One of the motorbikes then overtook him and pulled up in front of him, causing him to stop. The other motorbike then pulled up beside his car and the passenger got off and walked up to the side of the window and fired several shots into the car at Mena. The men on That's crazy. They stopped bro with a T-Pack maneuver and then did that. And then walked them down. That's RIP. That's, dude, that's crazy. The motorbikes then sped off after which Mena managed to get out of the car and stagger a short distance before collapsing. He died from massive blood loss. Now on the 21st of April 2001, Corey Wright and friend Wayne Henry just left the Chimes nightclub in their blue BMW convertible when they were both shot. After the shooting, the driver lost control of the BMW, ran through three women and then crashed into a night bus. Corey was shot in the back of the head and his friend Wayne suffered a hail of bullets. Sadly, both died from the shooting. Both murders remain unsolved. In just the space of two years, both Mena and Corey Wright, who were involved in the murder of Popcorn, were killed. Many believe Tottenham Mandem to be behind the hits. Was we all know, man. Even if This goes back in history, man. Before guns, man. Live by the gun, die by the gun. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Live by the bow and arrow, die by the bow and arrow. This is nothing new. C1 calling the shots. Now the Hackney boys responded by killing Tottenham Mandem slash firm member Adrian Bucket Crawford right, from Edmonton. He was murdered in December 2002 after being shot down in a hail of bullets in front of his pregnant girlfriend in West Green Road, Tottenham. Hackney boy Daniel Cummings, who was also a Hornslow club promoter, was pinned with the murder, having been identified by witness. However, C1 again came into the frame. According to street legends, they go along the lines that Daniel Cummings was not behind the killing, but Clint Ponton, aka C1, had forced Crawford's girlfriend to identify Cummings, a strategic move of sorts. Cummings had been serving a life sentence since 2003. A series of events following the murder of Crawford led to the eventual death of Hackney boy Skip, real name Jason Fearon, who was a high ranking general in Hackney, being a huge money maker. In April 2003, at Turnmills Club in Clerkenwell, during a So Solid Crew event, see So Solid Crew had links with Mark Lambie, and singer Lisa Mafia was to be promoting her debut single. An anonymous tip was made to Crime Stoppers that there would be trouble at the event. There was an attempt to prevent the event going ahead, but the event organiser refused. As a result, the police parked a vehicle outside the club, hoping that that would deter any would-be gunmen. However, in the early hours, several men burst into the club firing shots, injuring one person. The gunfire continued as the targets were chased into the streets. Jason Fearon- This is early 2000s? They said, right? AKA Skip and another man the police believed to be the main target made their way in the Audi TT sports car. They were followed by the That's an Audi TT? A Tottenham Mandem who believed to be Clinton Ponton, AKA C1 and Wesley Lambie firing shots into the Audi from their BMW during a car chase. Jason Fearon was wearing a bulletproof vest but was hit in the head and died. Wesley Lambie was in That's tough, man. That vest is so obsolete sometimes. That's why soldiers start wearing the Kevlar helmets. In fact, the younger brother of boss Mark Lambie. Now, C1 later created a music label known as North Star. Artists included Young Spray, China, OG, etc. North Star was created because of Tottenham Man links with urban music group, So Solid Crew through Lambie. After C1 had escaped being tried for the murder of Jason Fearon, he created Northstar as a legitimate music front slash enterprise. Northstar had links with numerous other music crews that had been closely linked to older gangs such as Poverty Driven Children, also known as Peel Dem Crew from Brixton. By 2000, Lambie had gained a reputation for being untouchable and for having mythical powers, believed by some to possess Scott. juju powers, of being an obi man a Jamaican voodoo spirit who can never be killed. He became the number one target for Operation Trident Detective. 
despite his high ranking position, he was still involved in shooting incidences. In November 1999, wow. he was named as the shooter in an incident at the Coliseum nightclub in Vauxhall, South London. He was charged with the attempted murder, but the victim later withdrew the evidence, as many victims of Tottenham Mandem do, and their predecessors have always done. By the way, Operation Trident, or simply Trident, is a metropolitan police unit originally set up in 1998 as an initiative with the police to tackle black on black gun crime. On the 9th of April 2001, Lambie drove from his girlfriend's home in Streatham, South London, and his vehicle was locked as it entered the Broadwater Farm estate. But what police did not know at the time was that the two Jamaican men who were living locally, Tawani Tupac Morris and Gregory Beanie Man Smith, had been summoned to their estate by Lambie. They were bundled into a Mazda car and driven to an address in Turner Avenue, Tottenham. Lambie and his gang joined up with Anthony Blue Born. Lambie, Born, and Warren Leader, as well as Francis Osei, they all burst into the house in Turner Avenue and ordered the two women and two children who lived there to go outside. They then began torturing Mr. Morris and Mr. Smith while demanding money. The two men had their knees and feet hit with hammers, had boiling water poured on their genitals and an electrical iron burned into their chest. Oh Eventually, my. Mr. Smith, desperate to escape the torture, suggested there might be money at a house in Wakefield Road which was being used as a hairdressing salon. The gang bundled him into the boot of a car and drove him to the house. Two women in the house were robbed and when another man arrived to have his hair cut, he too was robbed. But while they were inside, he managed to escape from the locked boot and ran half naked and bleeding to Tottenham police station where he raised the alarm. When the gang had realized what had happened, there was a flurry of phone calls. Mr. Morris was taken out of the house, but he managed to break free of his captors and spotting a passing police car jumped onto his bonnet. The police arrested Mr. Morris' tormentors within days and the reign of the Tottenham Mandem and the firm was about to come to an end. But Lambie, who had lost 25 grams of heroin when the police arrived, was convinced Mr. Morris and Mr. Smith would not dare name him. He rang them and demanded that they pay him £5,000 and another £1,000 a week in order for them to simply stay alive. As a warning, Mr. Morris was shot in Park Lane, Tottenham but he survived and named Anthony Bourne as the man who had pulled the trigger. At this point, and Damn. only at this point, Mr. Morris and Mr. Smith agreed to enter the witness protection program. They had to, because they was out there. La da 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 dee, la da da da. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Now safe, they agreed to give evidence against Lambie, North and their associates. Lambie and Bourne were convicted of kidnapping and blackmail. Both were jailed for 12 years. Gang members Warren Leader and Francis Osei were jailed for 11 and 9 years respectively for the same offences. Bourne, however, was cleared of attempted murder. Now with the arrest of their boss Mark Lambie, Tottenham became less unified and local independent gangs propped up such as MPK, Tiverton, Mandem, I- Okay, so I knew nothing nothing for the first 17 minutes and okay now i'm hearing some names i know ada blood stars etc meanwhile members of north star pursued their careers in music killings also dropped during this period but the rivalries continued throughout the music with rival gangs sending disses towards each other such as mash town from london fields in october 2003 gavin smith 28 had been abducted by a gang and then knifed in the back 17 times he died from multiple stab wounds right, that B. pierced his lungs. CCTV cameras on a Broadwater Farm estate captured the events around the killing of Gavin. Mark Duggan was arrested for it, but later released without charge. Three years later, Mark Duggan found himself in trouble again. He was arrested for the attempted murder of Surkhan Hussein, a Turkish mechanic who lost a kidney after being shot. Two of Duggan's associates were convicted, but he walked free after a witness. See, I've never heard any... um. Obviously, I never heard any of Mark Duggan's like rap sheet or street stuff. This is the first time I'm hearing about what he was doing outside. Bro had them stripes on him, didn't he? Failed to pick him out. Now around 2008, Mark Duggan formed Star Gang. Members included Junior Cameron, Daryl Albert, Kelvin Easton, also known as Smegs, as well as youngsters such as Heads, who we know today as Heady One and young RV oh. who later became RV. 
Now, uh -huh. Mark Duggan's right hand men, Junior Cameron and Daryl Albert, were on a joint hit with allies from PDC. The target was Gary Guthrie. Now, on the 22nd of October 2007, Gary left the Streatham nightclub in girlfriend's car along with best friend Rowan Williams. Two cars sped past him, clipping their vehicle before screeching to a halt. Gary left the Streatham nightclub in girlfriend's car along with best friend Rowan Williams. That's that early 2000s, Cheeks. You seen him? <laughs> Two no BBL needed back then, man. Cars sped past him, clipping their vehicle before screeching to a halt. My bad. Let's focus, you guys. Gary and Rowan got out of the cars to investigate what had happened when the two gunmen emerged from the cars. After being patted down, a struggle ensued and the two men were shot as they all tried to flee. Mr. Guthrie was fatally shot through the chest and lung. Dang, the bus all the way over there? By Cameron. Mr. Williams survived after surgery to remove a bullet fired by Albert from the base of his neck. Junior Cameron, 27, was found guilty of murder and jailed for a minimum of 26 years. Daryl Albert, 28, was convicted of attempted murder and must serve at least 13 years in prison. Now on the 27th of March, 2011, Smegs, real name Kelvin Easton, who was the cousin of Mark Duggan, was stabbed fatally inside the Bohemian nightclub in Mile End Road. Smegs was stabbed through the heart with a broken champagne bottle at a nightclub Dang. in East London in a row over drugs and women. Mark Duggan took his death badly and was very much hurting. The media claimed Duggan became paranoid about his own safety and carried a gun for protection. Operation Trident really had their in for Mark. They were on his case mm. and wanted him off the streets for good. Is this when that happened? On the 4th of August 2011, Mark called Kevin Hutchison Foster, who was somewhat of an arms dealer. Yeah, this is it. I, I know this story. They know his son, who goes by double L's. Mark arranged to buy a gun from I him. He went all the way to Leighton to collect it, where he would then get into a mini cup to go home. However, Mark was being followed by police and he knew when the minicab reached Ferry Lane, Tottenham officers carried out a hard stop, forcing the minicab to pull over. Duggan got out of the car and was instantly shot twice by Officer V35, killing Mark Duggan and injuring another officer known as W42. The officer claimed he saw Mark holding a gun in his oh, right hand. so thirsty. He was willing to put another officer in harm's way. Right hand and felt like his life was at risk. Although a gun was found at the scene, it was found seven meters away from the site of the shooting. No DNA evidence was found on the gun. Officer W42 said, there is no way that Mark Duggan could have thrown the gun from the minicab and me not see it. The officers also admitted they never saw him throw the gun. So the most likely conclusion is that they moved the gun there after Mark was shot dead. The independent officer for police conduct, AKA, IPCC investigated the, the shoot. handling of this case and and, uh, and the description of what happened oh, never sits right with me, bro. This is clearly bogus, though. And claimed there is no evidence that any officer entered the rear of the minicab. However, a video recording of the aftermath from a witness on a ninth floor of a nearby building shows that the IPCC has no grounds to rule out that possibility. So many inconsistencies and uncertainty in this case, it's no wonder why people believed he was intentionally murdered. Conflict and that's what my belief is. Conflicting accounts of the event leading up to Duggan's death were provided by the Metropolitan Police, attracting criticism and suspicion from invested parties. Also, the way the media portrayed him, for example, using this photo by cropping it out as the full image will paint a different picture. The jury ruled that his killing the media is a wild place, man. That's common. Was lawful. Mark Duggan's death caused public outrage. Riots broke out, which started in Tottenham, but then engulfed the whole of London. The youth would arrange riots on Blackberry Messenger, looting and violence followed. Soon it reached other cities such as Birmingham and Manchester. With Mark now dead, the younger generation of Star Gang took control. The likes of Hedy One, RV, Kush, Tugsy, etc. They were allied with MPK and beef gangs such as Wood Green Mob and other Eddie. A lot of people thought um Double L's dad had something to do with it. But I think that was disproven and I never when I heard the story it didn't sound like he had anything to do with it either. 
between gangs, which tells you just how quickly the streets changed as the Tottenham Mandem had a very strong relationship with people from Wood Green and Edmonton. MPK and Star Gang would ride together on their ops from Wood Green and Edmonton. On one occasion around 2011, RV and Stretch MPK would spot a few Wood Green members in McDonald's. They would run in and stab a few members, but when the script was flipped and more Wood Green members came to back the beef, RV ran away and left Stretch to fend for his own, where he would be stabbed by Steeler and other members. Thankfully, he survived. However, he would despise RV for what he did and would later drop a diss track exposed. What was RV supposed to do? <laughs> My bad, like, come on now. Using RV for not living the life he raps. Crazy how- Wait, but hold, whoa, whoa, whoa. So RV wasn't in the, wait, let me rewind was flipped and more wood match gang would ride together on their ops from wood green and edmonton on one occasion around 2011 rv and stretch mpk would spot a few wood green members in mcdonald's they would run in and stab a few members okay rv stretch and whatever whoever the other guy was ran in and they did what they did so he was active but when the script was flipped and but the script was flipped more wood green members came to and more Wood Green members came back to beef. RV ran away and RV noticed the numbers were not on his side anymore. And he proceeded to get up out of there. He probably thought that was the thing that everybody that did was doing, right? I can't say I blame, bro. And left Stretch to fend for his own way. He I don't like. Okay. <laughs> by Steve like what was it like 10 on 3 12 on 3 or what was the odds you know what I'm saying like let me know the numbers Hila and other members thankfully he survived oh. however he would despise RV for what he did and would later drop a diss track exposing RV for not living the life he raps crazy how things change at one point they used to collab on songs together and now Stretch was on a track dragging RV street cred through the mud now rv felt like he had something i said like, i'm never leaving one of the guys behind like you know what i'm saying but like if we outnumber we on the same page though at the same we like me and the hump we on the same page you feel me to prove so him tugsy and a few members went lurking in wood green they spotted a 15 year old wood we speaking telekinetically hey we're outnumbered Let's get up out of here, you know what I'm saying? RV street cred through the mud. Now RV felt like he had something to prove. So him, Tugsy and a few members went lurking in Wood Green. They spotted a 15 year old Wood Green member in the barbers. RV unleashed a vicious attack on the boy. RV and Tugsy were later convicted of wounded with intent to do grievously body harm and possession of an offensive weapon mm. in the stabbing of a 15 year old boy at a barber shop in Wood Green. He received a seven year sentence. RV however wasn't the only one with legal issues. Hedy One's bubbling rap career would take a hit when he was sentenced for dealing crack cocaine and heroin in 2014. See, now later down the year, know. Star Gang will become known as OFB, which stood for Original Farm Boys. I'm not gonna lie, like salute to the history of the name Star Boys, but I'm glad they did change that because it OFB sounds a lot better. Which included mem not saying that I condone anything, I'm just speaking on the name in itself. Members such as Heady One, RV, Abracadabra, Double L's, Bando K, who you may know as the son of Mark Duggan, SJ, Bones, Boogie B, and many more. Now on the 5th of June 2017, an OFB member known as Sanjay would get into an argument over Snapchat with another 16 year old known as Tiny, real name Osman Sharif. Their age was evidence with what they were arguing over. It was over who was the toughest. Osman had <laughs> boasted that he was the toughest. And when Ali responded with a crying with laughter emojis, the two friends fell out. Osman armed himself with a hammer for a confrontation the following day, while Sanjay pulled a kitchen knife from his sports bag. After the two teenagers were pulled apart, Sanji pursued Osman and inflicted a fatal stab wound just before 6pm on the 6th of June 
On the 27th of January 2018, Sanji was sentenced to life with a minimum Man. term of 15 years. On the same day, Sanji was sentenced. Over a, over a Snapchat argument over who's the toughest. Now y'all both, like, both of y'all life is gone. Nobody won. OFB took a... You know who was the toughest? Your Honor. <clears throat> HMP. <laughs> Another setback. When Wood Green member G Money posted a snap claiming that he had caught Heady One lacking and beat him up. Shortly after, a video was released of Heady One caught in Bedfordshire University where he was attacked. The incident would make headlines on social media. Now OFB didn't waste time to retaliate Heady? and literally a day later on the 27th, a Wood Green member was shot. RV was a rapper known for his lyrics, retaliation rate rapid and OFB just proved that to be true. Bet you a lot of people was in the comments like, oh yeah, Heady One got, got da, 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 da. everybody gets caught once. Social media went crazy. RV was quick to make fun of Wood Green after the shooting and he even drove past the scene of the crime Allegedly. on Snapchat. Heady One was also quick to respond on Twitter. Now Heady One and RV didn't waste any time capitalizing on a buzz. They instantly recorded a diss track titled No Better and dropped it a day later. This would be a huge mark in UK drill history and take their careers to the next level, especially Heady One. On the 18th of February 2018, OFB youngers including Boogie B, T1, Desi as well as London film members were partying at a flat in Kensington. You heard correct, despite a bloody war between the older Tottenham Mandem and London film members and how many lives were lost, the younger generation were now cool with each other. Now a Peckwater member, which is a gang from Camden, attempted to force themselves into the party. One member in particular known as Dots, real name Lewis Blackman, was armed with a knife and his friend possessed a firearm. It is I heard songs about him. Said he took Boogie B's necklace, which contained an image of his father. The firearm also jammed. The script was flipped, and it was now Dots running away from Boogie B and friends down the street, which was caught on CCTV. When they caught up to him, Dots was knifed repeatedly and sadly died. Boogie B was sentenced to 20 years in prison for murder, and E1 was given 11 years for manslaughter. Now, on the 14th of January 2019, OFB and MPK members including SJ, Tugger, OSAV to name a few would go to Edmonton to look for Ops. They spotted three times three members in 4th Street McDonald's where they attacked them with knives. Three times three had a member known as SJ2 and his martial arts background helped him fight off men armed with knives and got the better of some. SJ was obsessed with riding on his bro got to do on jujitsu Ops and it wasn't long before he was Bro, McDonald's always bussing. No matter what country, state, origin, it's always McDonald's. It's outside again. Now on the 21st of February 2019, NPK members were planning to go in a drill and convince SJ OFB to aid them. They parked a silver Peugeot 307 on the Broadwater Farm Estate with a fresh pair of clothes waiting for them after the drill. So on the following day, six MPK members uh. and SJ will travel to Wood Green on their pedal bike. They cycle to View Cinema, which was a common location for Wood Green members to hang out. The worst mistake of SJ's life. When they arrived, they spotted Wood Green member K1, Y Dot and Swift. MPK member Shems instantly shot at them. However, he missed, causing him to split up and run. They chased after them and caught up with Swift, who was cornered. Swift was shot and stabbed. K1 being further ahead made it to his car. Now in an act of pure loyalty and bravery, K1 used his car to ram his car into the attackers in an attempt to free Swift. Sadly, he got stuck between cars and was now a sitting duck. Trills, Sneaks and Osav noticed this and turned their attention to K1. K1 and Swift ran off and made it to coffee. Maybe know this, do know this part, right? ...and cream hairdressers where they barricaded the door. The MPK members booted down a door and stabbed K1 numerous times in front of women and children, leaving him for dead before pedaling back to the Broadwater Farm Estate to change their clothes. Now on the 21st of April, MPK members Trills and Shems were arrested for the murder and not too long after, on the 16th of May, SJ, also known as Samurai Jack, was arrested for the murder of K1. Despite now being... 
And bro found out in a in a freestyle that he was wanted. In jail, SJOFB would release his solo drill hit, Youngest in Charge, which would gain him millions of- I remember of this, man. I remember reacting to this. What a good moment in drill. These days will never be back. We'll never spin the block. Views These and had him on the verge of He was even offered a record deal worth 150k while he was awaiting trial. On the 10th of July, 07 Sneaks were also arrested. All members were found guilty for the murder. SJ Sneaks and OSAV were sentenced to 21 years, while Trills got 25 and Shems got 28. The infighting of the sentence came to light an accusation of snitching. Osai being the one to tell. However, MPK members didn't take this lightly, even though he did, and pointed fingers at SJ. This would have huge repercussions on the streets, as now once allied gangs, MPK and OFB became enemies and would score on each other. Now on the 20th of August 2019, an OFB member known as Remzi would rob a 14 year old boy for his 90 pound night trainers. It was caught on CCTV. Ramsey would travel back to his home in Broadwater Farm Estate where a 15 year old boy known as Perry Jordan stepped in to help a 14 year old boy in an attempt to get his trainers back. Ramsey would then grab Perry by his neck and stab him 10 times on a Broadwater Farm Estate. Perry was taken to hospital where he sadly died from his injuries on the 4th of September 2019. Ramsey- That's what I'm saying man, I ain't gonna wanna say like R.I.P first and foremost. But the way I would have minded my business is so crazy. Man, they just took my shoes, bro. Go grab some more. Me personally. He was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 21 years at Woolwich Crown Court. Now in 2019, Hedy One was stopped by police. Footage shown from their body cam where he later ran off before being caught and found in possession of a knife. He will later do six months in prison for it. On the 19th of February 2000, I ain't never seen that that video. Hetty one was trying to get up out of there, wasn't he? 2020, MPK members attacked OFB members Creeper, D1, and Frogger, captured on CCTV. Creeper hid in the toilets while Frogger and D1 were attacked by Sparks and another MPK member. This was the start of the falling out turning physical. The lines were finally drawn with blood. On the 20th of July 2020, Hedy One made UK drill history when he dropped a drill track that features the biggest rapper in the world, Drake. Despite setbacks in the past, oh, Hedy One was now a massive rapper who would only gain more international attention from this track. Drake even called Hedy One the best drill artist in the world. Now with SJ serving life and out of the picture, OFB I do like Hedy One. Not need a replacement for the famous Bando K, SJ and Double L's trio. This is where Izpa stepped into the picture with his cold. His pot was good, but like as soon as he like he got locked up and disappeared, and it was just like, all right, we're done. Flow. He was OFB's rising star. Now on the 24th of September 2020, Izpa was on a northbound train as it left Northumberland Park Station just after 7 p.m. He was attacked by two Enfield members and a 14 year old MPK member known as Jazzy. Ispo suffered stab wounds to the back of his right shoulder and head, a severe injury to his hand and was slashed near his left eye as a result of the attack. The three members involved were all jailed and sentenced for the attack. Now Hedy One was taking a flight home from Dubai when he was spotted by a rival drill rapper from Edmonton Damn. known as Tion Wayne, who himself was a massive artist. Despite being on a plane, Tion Wayne is videoed swinging at Hedy where passengers had to stop the fight. Oh, if passengers such as Morrison. FB and Edmonton then went back and forth on social media giving their own versions of what had happened. Now during this period, MPK started to link up with one of OFB's main rivals known as TPO who come from Turpike Lane. In the past, OFB member Desi was shot by a TPO member causing him to lose a kidney and this was constantly referenced in TPO drill song such as Philly Don't Dance. Now on the 28th of May 2021, M two days after my birthday, MPK and TPL members were shooting a music video for a drill collab titled Hickok 45. They posted on Snap giving their location away. OFB members got in a car and went to Turpak Lane 
where they spotted TPL member Driz and shot him dead. They then went to Park Lane Tottenham, three miles away from Turpank Lane, to carry out a shooting on MPK members. Now in August 2021, TPL member Philly would catch up. Oh, yeah, everybody just gotta stop dropping holes, man. RV lacking. He would record RV where he would claim RV was making sure he was around the two police officers to his right, which would prevent Philly from doing anything. RV would later respond by posting a video of him chasing another TPO member. Now in August, things would get even worse for OFB when MPK youngster known as KY would stab OFB member 6 in daylight in Lordship Recreation Park in Tottenham and Oh, broad day bait face didn't care run off with his phone. Six fell unconscious and died in hospital on the 10th of August 2021. A post-mortem examination found that Six died from blood loss after sustaining three stab wounds to the upper thigh. KY instantly got onto Snapchat to mock the ordeal the day it happened and captioned it, I just scored on an old school friend. OFB members paid their respects to their fallen member six. KY was later sentenced to 19 years for the murder. Obviously. Now this brings me to the end of the story. Bro got on Snapchat and, and did it for clout. Eddie One's career is still going strong. Although the trio of Bando K, Double L's and Ispo didn't live up to the hype, with Bando K facing legal issues currently, rumors Double L's kicked out of OFB for snitching, and Ispo just disappearing musically. SJ, how? Hey, Double L's is kicked out of OFB for snitching? I didn't even know that. Oh my God. That's tough. However, he's in prison publicly regretting his lifestyle. Sanji in prison complaining about having no visits and how fake the streets are. I think this is a lesson for any kid thinking this life is cool. As always, I send my condolences to the family of yeah, everyone Yeah, R.I.P. to everybody he mentioned, man. But the lesson is, man, stay out the streets. Because the streets don't love nobody. If you like the editing, just know it's outsourced and paid for. Hence why I need you all to support my Patreon. Oh, uh, it's outsourced? Oh, Brody then went crazy. It's worth it, though. It is worth it to deliver this quality like and subscribe to till the next time i salute it man tll leave a like comment subscribe turn on your post i'm gone